Hey guys and welcome to another WX Python tutorial here on the Coders Legacy channel. In this video we're going to take a look at the text control widget. Okay, so it's a pretty interesting widget and it's one of the most important ones if you ask me. If I had to name three most important widgets in WX Python or actually any GUI library, it would be the static text widget, you know, something that can display text and a button, okay, something that the user can interact with and trigger events. And thirdly, I would say it's the text entry widget, okay, a widget that can take in text from the user, which the user can input text inside of it, which in WX Python is called the text control widget, okay. Now, in something interesting about the text control widget is that it's very powerful, okay. It has like, I think 20 or 15 to 20 different styles that you can use to adjust it in like, you can do a whole bunch of stuff with it, okay? Just trust me, okay? We're gonna show you a lot of his different examples here today, okay? So let's get right into it, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and create the text control widget. I'll call it text is equal to wx dot text control. Don't let the weird name put you off, by the way, okay? Uh, it did for me, and I only re later realized just how important it was, okay? So soft dot panel, and that's the parent. So what's next? Value, okay? Now usually when you create widgets, you have label, okay? But we don't have that here, okay? We have value, okay? Value is basically the text value inside of it, okay? So uh, normally I would leave this blank, but just to show you guys, I'm gonna give this a value of default value, okay? We'll see this show up once we create the widget, okay? And position, okay? Position can be 50 by 50. Okay, and let's just run this. Okay, there we go. There's our text control widget. There's some text already in it. I can just delete that and enter whatever. Okay, so just to notice a few things, let's notice, uh, let's try to examine this. Okay, okay, I can see that it is a single line. Okay, I, if I press enter, it's not moving to a new line. And if I keep pressing down on the characters, I can see that it sort of, uh, you know, continues the line, okay? So it doesn't warp or anything like that. Not yet, okay? So just so you notice those few things. Before we move on to the styles, I think we should just take a look at the events, maybe? Okay, the events for the text control widget, okay? Now, it actually has several, but let's just focus on the main one, okay? I'll include a link to my website and you'll find the entire list of styles, methods, and events over there, okay? There are too many to actually discuss in here, so I'm just gonna <clears throat> focus on the main thing, okay? Text.bind, and the event should be called um, TE text, I believe, okay? Hopefully, I got that right. And over here, I'm gonna print out, make a function actually, on press, like, you know, on press of a keyboard, uh, key, just print something like, uh, the text has been changed. The text has been changed, okay? Now I'm gonna bind it to this function. And in case you haven't seen this before, you know, the entire binding process in WX Python, what's basically happening is that I'm taking my text widget over here, text control widget, and I'm binding it to this event, this event that occurs every time the text inside the text control widget is changed. So if I add a new character, if I remove a new, if I remove a existing character, this event is called. And I'm binding this event to this function. So whenever this event is detected on this widget, this function will be called. Okay, that's how this works. Okay and this passes in a parameter for the event, okay? So hopefully I got the name of this event right and let's run this code and see what happens. No, I didn't. Just hold on a minute and I'll double check that. Okay, my bad, it was actually event, okay? Uh, I was kind of doing it, you know, like the way styles are done. Okay, so yeah. Now I'll go ahead and run this. I'll delete this, okay? And this was printed out, why? Because I've just changed the text value inside of it. Now I'll go ahead and type something like hello. And every time I type in something, this event gets triggered, okay? Now, let's take a look at some styles, okay? This is basically the main highlight of today, really, okay? There are a few functions as well, but take a look at those. But the first style that I wanna take a look at is something that I think is kinda cool. 
which is basically what's called wx dot and password i'm pretty sure this is it so you know what i'm gonna create a new text widget okay i'm just gonna create a new one and put this down here oh more like down here okay let's just separate these a bit i'll call this text 2 i'll call this text 1 and over here what i'm gonna do is just put this a bit lower okay and okay leave the value blank okay and then i'll make the style wx.te password okay now just watch all right so pretend like this is a login form okay this is our username i can type in something like coders legacy in here and or here's our password now you don't want your password being printed out on screen sorry not printed out i mean you don't want your password to appear as it is inside this entry field right because uh, that's just how it's done it's privacy reasons and everything so with the wx.te underscore password style if i try to type in a password guess what happens yep there you go i just wrote in password and it all appears as you know asterisks or dots or whatever you want to think of it as so it's pretty handy and if you want to do a password kind of field you can just use this okay now i think we should go and take a look at multi-line text widgets now this is done by just changing a single um by just changing a single style right style so i'll just delete this over here we don't need that anymore not really and I think we should maybe remove this or no we'll leave it later because there's one more event i want to show you guys okay that's related to multi-line widgets so i'll do style is equal to wx.te multi line now let's run this okay hold on let me just change the position a bit okay there we go looks better okay so at once we can notice that this scroll bar is over here a vertical scroll bar okay and this basically comes into play once we've reached the bottom of our text okay so we can use it to kind of you know scroll through it okay now by chance you may not want the scroll bar okay you might think that no i don't want the user to be able to enter more text than the size of the box okay and you can adjust the size by the size parameter by the way i'm just leaving it on default so if you think that then you can do wx.te and it's called no v scroll okay so if you do this there you go and i can't go go past this if i press enter it won't work okay so i'm limited to only this container all right so let's go ahead and try out some other styles okay wx.te read only this is also kind of handy style okay you might want it like if you just want to display some text okay and you don't want the user to be able to edit you can just use read only and i can change the value for this text control okay pressing enter or uh, backspace or any other character key will not change the value okay so that's also kind of handy and there's also this other one i just think i'll mention it it's like te underscore auto url if you have urls inside of your uh, text widget it'll generate an event for urls you can go check that out on, on my website okay all extra details all that kind of stuff are over there okay there's one more thing i want to discuss which is alignment okay alignment for the widgets we have wx te and was there a line no there wasn't it's just te left i think okay but we're already left aligned right so we should try right aligning okay so let's try that okay there you go you can see it already okay now if i just delete that and try entering new values we can see that we're basically starting from the right instead of instead of the left okay so if you want to do that for some reason then sure go ahead there's also other stuff like left okay there's also center okay center by the way like this so if i try that okay that's kind of interesting actually that might actually come in handy so yeah that's pretty much it for our styles and let's just leave it on these settings 
Okay. Oh, okay. One more thing. One more thing. I just remembered that you can add in a horizontal scroll bar with like with you know with this basically. So okay, hold on. Was it edge scroll? Why is it not working? Okay. Was it perhaps edge scroll like that? Or something? Nope. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. So here we are. Here's our horizontal scroll bar. So basically, we can just scroll around like this. Pretty handy. All right. So enough of that. Okay. Let's move on to some of the functions. I'll go ahead and create a button for this. We'll use this button to basically press the. I'll press the button and then the functions will trigger. Okay. Otherwise, I won't be able to show you properly. So here we are. I'll just create this real quick. Label. Click me, okay, and I'll put this somewhere over there, 100 by 150, okay, and then I'm going to trigger this button to the event for it, okay, I trust all of you have watched my button tutorial or already know how to do this, in which case if you haven't, then please go and watch it, I'll include all links in the description below. Okay, let's just remove this function. I don't think we need it anymore. Let's just remove that too. We don't need that anymore. And on click, okay, on click. All right, we're good. All right, now what I want to do is try calling some functions on the text widget, okay? So what's the first thing that we should try? How about, hmm. I need to use self over here, actually, otherwise I won't, I won't be able to access it. Self.text.get number of lines. Now, I don't think I need to explain this, actually. So let's just run this code and try it out. Oh, okay, the button looks kind of weird over there. Hold on. 200. All right. All right, we got one. One line is there. Let me print hello world and code is legacy. We should see three, and yeah, pretty much as expected, pretty simple. There's no need to explain that much. So what else should we try? There's also get line text, okay? This takes a parameter, okay? This takes an index value, okay, of a line, okay? So how about I print out zero over here? So I put zero in there, and this is basically gonna print out the value of the first line, default value. Let me change that with hello world. And there you go, hello world. Okay, and just to prove it that it only does the first line, let me print out Coder's legacy over here, and you'll only see hello world show up. Okay, now what if if you want to print out the entire thing? Okay, what if you want to print out all the contents over there? You can use get value. Okay, and if I just type in a bunch of stuff, hello world, Coder's legacy, and what else? Random, random, random. Okay. Now, if I go ahead and click me over here, we get the entire thing printed out, okay? So, pretty handy. Okay? And what else is there? There's get line length, okay? Again, same thing as get line text, just pass in the, the index of the line, and there you go, 13. There are 13 characters in there, including that little space, okay? Again, pretty handy, and you may want this, okay? And what else is there? Hmm. Okay, there is one more thing. One more thing kind of handy. Uh, I'm, I'm not really going to show you this entirely, but uh, there is load file. Okay, and this takes a file name in the parameters like random.txt. Okay, now if you have a file called random.txt in the same directory as this file, as this Python file, it'll basically load all the text automatically from that file into your text control widget. Pretty cool, right? You don't need to make your own function for that. You have one already available, okay? And on the same note, we have one called save file, okay? You have one called save file that you can use to just save text. You just pass in the name of the file and it'll save the text to it. So overall, pretty cool and pretty useful. And be sure to use some of these or at least try to. 
Okay, hold on, just one last one that I just remembered, which is which is something I found kind of interesting. Set max length. And this takes a parameter, like pen, okay? Just watch, I'll just demonstrate this in front of you. I'll try printing out some values. Okay, that didn't trigger. Oh, wait, of course, of course. Set max length doesn't actually restrict it, I believe. It actually generates this event for uh, self dot text dot bind. Let me, let me just show you that. It does something like what was it? Text and max, I think. Okay, whatever. You can go check that out on my website. I think I'm getting too long here because I don't think you guys are that interested in the nitty gritty details. But basically, what the gist of it is that if you set max length, it actually uh, generates the max length event. Okay once the user tries entering more. Okay, I'm not sure if it looks like, like this. It looks something like this. I think max len like this, that's what the event looks like. You can go check it out on my, web, on my website. But basically what I'm trying to tell you here is that this event will be generated, okay? So if you want to do something like stop the user from entering data, so you can do this that once this event is generated, just bind it to a function, which then prints out a warning sign like stop, don't do it, okay? Don't enter any more data, okay? So you can basically do that. Okay, so that's up to you guys, and I think we've gotten enough stuff for this video, okay? I'm pretty sure you guys want to see the next widget, so we'll go ahead and do that, okay? Then the next one is pretty simple, okay? Compared to the text control widget, it's going to be a static line, probably, okay? Otherwise, we'll take a look at radio buttons and check buttons soon as well, okay? So that's pretty much it for now. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this in the future, if you want to get updated immediately, and yeah, see you guys in a later video.